Hey everybody, today we're going to play what is going on in my pond. You know, before you can fix a problem with a pond, you need to know what it is. So I'm going to give you some quick, you know, scenarios of what's happening in your pond and it, let's identify what those are so then we know what to go do about it. So number one, floating clumps of algae, you know, floating along the top of the water, and clumps you can grab with your hand. That's a blanket algae. Stringy algae, you know, growing on your waterfall or your rocks or side. And we're talking, you know, where it's stringy and long, okay? You know, well, we're going to really, <laughs> where this was a tough one. String algae, also known as hair algae, you know. Now, both of these can be solved with the same types of solutions. Barley straw, you know, any kind of a barley extract, or an algicide, you know, something made to, to handle the string algae. Now, our next problem is green water. So, you know, it's just that pea green, soupy green water. I can't tell you how many times, you know, working in the pond store, people would come in with just a jar of green water. It's like, here's my problem. It's like, okay, put it over there with the, the other 800 jars of green water. So that's an algae bloom, you know. The, uh, uh, typically what will happen, especially with a new pond or somebody's cleaned out their pond and they're refilling it, it looks great for a few days. And, you know, the sun's out and then all of a sudden, boom, algae bloom. So there's a couple of things we do about that. Uh, number one, and the easiest way to handle it, is patience. Especially if you have a good filtration system and you've added bacteria and you have some plants, you know, let, you know, the bloom will come on, give it a little bit of time, let your, you know, let your pond work, all the, the natural, you know, solutions that you have to green water, and that'll take care of it. But if you're like me and you're impatient and you have a good filter system, uh, use a flocculant, you know, something like an aqua rim, a, a pond clear, anything with clear, you know, you want to you know read the label, but it, basically what these do is they clump it. You know you've got all this this green water, but what that really is is lots of tiny you know very very tiny uh, algae uh, just floating in there, and the flocculants clump it together into bigger balls, and those then get sucked uh, in through your pump and through your filter, and uh, like I say if you have a decent filtration system, it'll just you know snag them out right away, instant clear water, and I mean instant. We're talking 30 minutes sometimes. Uh, be careful though. Uh, a lot of people, you know, with, as with anything else, if a little bit's good, more is better. And of course, that's not true, um, you know, especially with pond chemicals. Because yeah, I've killed some, <laughs> I've killed some beautiful koi by overdosing them, you know, just being stupid. So don't do that. But um, those are your two solutions to green water. Um, the other thing we see a lot is brown water or stinky water. Now that could be a couple of different things. Uh, the brown could be caused by tannins in the water, which typically would mean you've got it near shade and you've got some leaves. And some types of leaves, say maple leaves, uh, are going to release uh, tannins in the water and basically dye your water brown. Uh, not, not really a big problem, but if those leaves build up and you start getting layers and layers of leaves and they start decomposing, you're gonna have sludge in the bottom of your pond. Now that can be a big problem because uh, if it starts to stink, and what's happening is as those bubbles form in, in the sludge and they come up, um, that gas is bad. I mean, it's toxic stuff. It's toxic, it's toxic to your fish. It's, it's toxic to you. If you can smell it, uh, it's not good for you. So the solution to that, unfortunately, is some cleaning. You know, getting in there and cleaning out your pond and adding bacteria to your filters, maybe adding some filters that can handle, you know, that have bio balls or filter media that you can seed with some more bacteria that can, uh, you know, kind of counteract that. Now the last thing we see, and this one's bad news, oily. You come out and you're, you know, kind of got an oily sheen to your water. Now it could have been that you've thrown in some type of food, that, you know, that's not koi food that you thought your fish would like and that's causing the problem, you know, something you've added. But the bad news is, uh, so many times when I've came out to ponds that have oily water, it's because it's a pump problem, you know, the pump is leaking oil. Now a lot of the pumps uh, now, you know, use a, a mineral oil, something that's not going to kill your fish. You know, back not too long ago, we had so many problems with those little, you know, small MSRP model, uh, little giant pumps that had oil in them and they would leak like crazy because people would use these, you know, that are made for pumping out, you know, as a sump pump and they're great for cleaning out your pond, but running continuous duty, they would start to leak oil and they would kill everything. So the first thing we wanna do 
uh, if we have oil on the water is check our pump because that could be a major problem for you. So anyway, that's today's you know, edition of what's going on in my pond and hopefully some quick tips to point you in the right direction to start taking care of those problems.